Hello, Oscillator Sync here. If you've been following the channel for a while, it'll be no surprise to hear that I'm currently into what I'll generically call slow music. And while I've not shied away from it in the past, it's definitely the case that in the last few weird months, I've been going there a lot more often because it offers me a brain break. The process of preparing and arranging ambient or drone music is kind of meditative for me, just as much as the listening is. One of my favourite instruments to create drones with is the Electron Digitone, and I've been asked about my process a few times, so that's what this video is about. And it's going to be a long one, I know because I'm recording this introduction last, because we're going to go from nothing to a finished piece, but hopefully along the way there will be some ideas and tips that you'll be able to apply to your own music. And while the Digitone is the instrument of choice here, a lot of the concepts are going to apply no matter what instruments you use. And either way, there's going to be some very chill music happening most of the time. I'm not trying to imply that I'm an expert in creating this kind of music, and I'm definitely not going to suggest that the process in this video is the definitive approach, but I wanted to share a workflow and some sound design techniques that I've enjoyed using. Before we get to the Digitone though, I'd like to introduce my one rule for drones, which is move slowly, but never stop moving. Whether that movement is harmonic, timbral, rhythmic or melodic, move slowly but never stop moving. One of the elements of drone that especially interests me is how the line between all of those things is blurred. Often, the notes that you choose to make up a drone are better considered to be harmonic or inharmonic overtones of the drone. Conventional rhythm might be hard to find, but the beating between different frequencies or the interleaving modulation of sounds can imply a rhythm in the moment. And the compositional choices you make amongst these blurred lines can create tension and release, musical questions and answers, themes and developments, just as you would in other arrangements. Just, you know, much, much slower. So I'm here on an initialized uh, pattern here, and let's start by thinking sort of in broad terms about the arrangement if you like what we're going to be using our tracks for so my plan is first two tracks to have a kind of a paddy kind of drone uh, track three can be our sort of bassy drone and then track four we'll add some um probably some more sort of ambient melodic motifs maybe just to create a little bit of interest here and there uh, so let's start with track one which would be one of our paddy drones what i plan to do is have one that is more sort of stable, that's a bit more grounding what's going on, and one that's a little bit more unstable. Uh, but we'll start with the more stable one, first of all. So um, go into our amp page. Now, I'm not necessarily an advocate for making all drone sounds have long attacks and long releases. And in fact, when we get to the bass sound, we'll probably not work that way. It does kind of sound good. Uh, right, before we get into any of the other sound design on this one, I'm actually going to come into the second amp page here. And I'm just going to chuck on loads of reverb. Now again, adding loads of reverb on everything that you're doing within drone, not necessarily the best thing at all times. It gives you no back to front contrast if everything's drenched in reverb. And again, when we get some of the other parts, we'll possibly try and make them a little bit drier so that they're not sort of just sort of soaked in reverb. But having a big long reverb does allow you some sound design tricks. And you, by, by having it here at the start, you're kind of working it into the actual sound design process. So um, let's just make it nice and long and also a bit darker I'm just coming down to one of these other tracks here and just here the tone of it a little bit of rattle at the top but otherwise I think that's just about right uh, and also we'll chuck on a load of delay as well and we'll make that delay uh, ping pong so we're going to delay page turn on ping pong again give it a little bit more feedback but then darken the feedback low pass filter quite a lot again we'll just come into this spare sound here 
to hear that. It's a much darker delay compared to the original sound, which I like. The other thing that we can do in the delay page, and then we will actually get on to making the drone in a second, is we can send some of the delay into the reverb as well, so that the delay itself reverberates, which is kind of my preference most of the time. More, more feedback. I'll come back and it's probably too much. I'll come back and tweak that as we go along anyway. Um let's go back and turn those off so I'm not surprised with them in a bit. Okay, so we now have a sound that's gonna go on forever because it's got a load of reverb and a load of delay, and then the delay is going into the reverb. Makes us able to have notes ring out for longer then they're playing, which when you're dealing with only eight voices of polyphony might well be a benefit. So um, let's uh, create a bit more interest and indeed movement, because as I said, everything has to be moving at all times. So which algorithm? Uh, let's go with algorithm two, which is essentially two lanes of um, two op voices. And let's start playing with the FM parameters a little bit. Uh, let's maybe... I probably don't want to push this too high. It's kind of nice though. Uh, so one other thing that I tend to do with these sorts of voices, because it helps with that clicky attack there, uh, is I tend to come into the second page of Sin 2 and I turn the phase we set off. That hasn't fixed everything yet, but then if we come into the amp page, and if we turn the amp and vote reset off, kind of got rid of that clickiness. There are other things you can do with the filter reset and stuff which can um, help as well, but uh, that should do us the trick for the moment. So we'll listen to the other side as well. Maybe a little bit of feedback. Nothing particularly clever with the FM voices, but let's have them move a little bit. Um, so maybe we can have one fade in slowly and decay down. on the digger zone, especially when they're going hot into the reverb and the delay, when they're quite still signy, they can take up a lot of space in the low mid. So quite often I will come into the second filter page where you've got the bass width filter and just start to take out some of the bottom end. You can take quite a lot out because of course remember we're going to have a bass voice in here as well. I just don't want it to take up quite so much of that bottom end, bottom, or more the low mids, really. Okay, so let's um, think about our filter. Uh, I'm going to switch over to the four pole.
keep a bit of resonance on there. And again, we can have So I'm going to crank the sustain all the way up and adjust the envelope to find my highest point. Maybe not the slowest attack, but maybe a very slow decay, very slow release out the end of it. I think this one is still coming on a bit too hot there. Uh, at the moment, everything's a bit stable. Even though this is the stable voice, I'd like this to be a little less stable. So I'll we'll just bring in a little bit of detune. So we get some quite a lot of detune. So we get some of that beating. Which be accentuated by the feedback a little bit. We try a different ratio. Maybe if we come into uh, the Sin 1 second page, maybe let's just try detuning. a little bit. Try low octave. Let's get in there. Yeah, that high ratio, a bit more of a bell tone, having that detune there and further detuning it manually on the ratios. Give it more of a bell tone. I like that. Okay, um, I'm going to go and adjust the LFOs next. But before I do that, I'm going to set the tempo, which obviously is going to be really low. Should we go all the way down? 31. Let's, let's show some restraint and not go all the way down. The reason I'm going to set my BPM before I do my LFOs is because in the LFOs, uh, when you look at the multiplier here, you'll find that you have two different sort of sections. So you've got the multipliers which are uh, related to the BPM as they are now. So uh, one, two, four, power to two going up. And then you have the multipliers which are independent of the BPM. So if you're trying to make really slow movements, which is of course, more what we're looking for here. Um, which one of these you choose, whether it's the one times BPM or the straight up one, will depend on what your um, BPM is actually set at because the ones without the BPM set here, I believe are set to um, relate to 120 BPM. So if your BPM of your pattern is higher than 120, and you want slowest possible modulation, you want to be the with the uh, unsynced ones but in our case uh, we want to be with the synced one if we want to create very slow um, modulations indeed which is what we're all about today so back to the first page here what are we going to do in terms of our movement so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a small amount of very slow pitch wobble so I'll make this achingly slow and something like something like 0.1, something around there, is probably the limit of what you can have without it becoming um, obviously out of tune. But now that we have LFOs and our reverb, so as the pitch drifts, the old pitch is sort of hanging out in the reverb and in the delay, just having that tiny bit of pitch movement Just go into the second filter page and just take out some of the extreme highs. Make a bit more mid-range focused. 
can hear that you get a little bit of beating in the tuning there, maybe you can push it a little bit further. You listen there, try it on the cusp of being out of tune now, noticeably out of tune. And that's about right, I think. Okay, so uh, we, we've got lots of movement in the envelopes, but the envelopes will eventually end, so we need some more timbral movement to be introduced here. So what can we do for that? Uh, well, we can maybe look at moving the level of, uh, of A, perhaps. Let's try that. So again, we'll set that really slow, which will be our BPMs. And again, slow, 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 but not the same as the other one. We want to have differences between them. Push that a bit more. I'll do for our first voice so let's actually sequence some notes here so um, again let's make things as slow as possible because that's what we're doing making slow music so we'll go into our pattern here funk and page and we're going to do function yes for length per pattern because we want to have our patterns roll over each other so if we want to have our patterns rolling over each other and um, different pattern lengths taking advantage of that we want to make sure that our master length here is set to infinite so it doesn't keep resetting um, every well, by default 16 so if you have different pattern lengths and this is set to 16 what will happen is that every 16 um, beats the everything will reset anyway and we don't want that we want it to go on infinitely we're going to set our scale to be slow and we're going to set our length I, I tend to just out of have it tend towards prime numbers they just seem to work nicely so let's put in a oh hang on before i do this we want nice long notes don't we so in our trick page before we lay down any tricks we're going to set these really long remember with our multipliers you need to go really really long now let's try 100 for the moment so um what i'm going to do here is i'm going to set down a trig on every single step 13 steps obviously if we were on to make something a little bit more complex we might go on for more than 13 steps but we'll go for 13 in this case so um let's go into so if we play now obviously oh my metronome is on just going to keep playing same note again and again Obviously that's not what we're after here. So let's go in and actually lock in some different notes. So this is our more stable um, track, if you like. So I'm going to stick mostly sort of diatonic notes. So we'll, we'll stick in C just because it's easy. So uh, I don't want to speak too clearly to major or minor. So we'll try and avoid uh, uh, the major third too much but we will stick it in sometimes we'll have a nice high d below a c because we tried that get the fifths um, i was playing in a sharp b flat in c which i quite liked um it's a higher one as well and and this is the programming of the other notes is kind of going to be to to taste and a little bit of music theory is not a terrible thing to have in this case on 13 unlucky 13 let's put something that's not as diatonic let's maybe put 
Let's try a G sharp, maybe a higher one. When you're looking at discordances, let's be actually discordant. Let's try an F sharp. If you're thinking about discordances, the higher you put them from the lowest note, if you like, the less clashy they'll be. So having our F sharp up in octave seven, it's probably not the worst thing in the world. I'll just save this. Uh, in fact, let's save the project. Why not? We're in the middle of it. Uh, what I would usually do now is go through these, hold them down and assign probabilities to them. But because we now have the master probability here, I'm just going to set that to 20. Let's go with 20. And uh, let's set that playing and see what comes out. Obviously, we're not going to get a note on every single step. And of course, now I'm recording a video. I still think that's too bright at its highest point. Let's make it a bit darker. And the note choices are, in many ways, it's it's possibly useful to think about the note choices in terms of harmonics that are happening here because we're building up an overall drone of course so it's not so much a, a chord progression as it is uh, building up layers of harmonics within a, a drone okay something that's moving too too quickly for my liking it's not going to be that decay there uh, I guess it must be one of these decays Okay, so a couple of things we can do to make this pattern more interesting, even on its own as a drone. Uh, I'll probably lower the probability when we start bringing in other things, but uh, just so we can hear things at the moment. So the first thing we'll do is we'll come through each of these steps and let's, let's parameter lock a different pan for all of them. So that as the notes play, they spread themselves around the stereo field. And I'm just doing this more or less at random, although I do know that I want that discordant note to be right out at the side. So uh, what else can we do to make this a more interesting sound field? So one thing I like to do, uh, if we consider in our LFOs, currently all of the notes that are playing are going to have themselves moving slowly but at the same rate so what I tend to do is go into each of the steps and just nudge speed for all of them differently so that um, so that when they uh, do play over each other they are moving at different speeds So maybe we'll just have a couple of them nudge their pitch a bit further outside the realms of good taste. Of course, it's possible because of the probability that sometimes drop out altogether. That's fine because we'll have other tracks going in there as well. And now we've got more interesting beating happening between those notes. We're creating tension, which means that we can have release. Let's keep an eye on the voice usage a little bit as well, but we'll come back to that once we've got the rest of the stuff in there. 
Uh, we could also come into them and on some of them maybe push the detune a bit harder or less hard. Just create a little bit of variance in the different notes. Okay, let's move on to our next part and create something with a little bit more uh, instability, a little bit more tension for us to get release from. Okay, we're back with a um, untouched sound here. So I'm going to create something with a bit more tension. So I'm going to go over to the most tensiony of all of the algorithms which is algorithm six because it has all that cross modulation going on in there delicious so this one again is going to be kind of a paddy sound so we're going to set our stuff long and we'll give it an absolute ton of reverb Also set our um, amp envelope reset to off, and in page two of sys two of sin two, we'll turn off the phase as well, phase reset, I should say. So let's set about creating a more tensiony kind of sound, and we'll, we'll just kind of get the main sound happening, and then we'll start introducing envelopes and stuff. So in this case, A is going to be modulating both of these operators once I fade them in. And let's give A some manual detune here in page two. By detuning that, we're getting that beating happening. Let's also tune C and B1, our two carriers, away from each other as well. And here you can see that we can get rhythmic movement that's also basically timbral. So as we get different notes happening in this track, Because of the frequencies beating against each other in different ways, we're going to be getting an implicit rhythm happening, which can be quite exciting in in the, in the concept in the context of a drone. Let's try changing the waveform a little bit. sine waves or as close as let's have a look at our ratios on B now let's bring in now I can go something quite high but then detune that off wildly modulation, the fact that everything's detuned. As you bring up that level there, we're getting quite interesting stuff happening. So perhaps we'll use an LFO on that. 
Uh, yeah, why not? Okay, let's let's just go ahead and say that we're going to do that. So, uh, sin a level. We want to be BPM based and slow, 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 and slow. And what's our midpoint and how far we're we going to deviate? Stick it at 40 and go 30 either way, which is quite a lot. So um, all of your LFO parameters are going to be relative to the way that the parameter actually works. So if I set uh, sin level A to 40 and I set my bipolar LFO to have a depth of 30, that's going to swing down to 10 uh, and up to 70. Harshness has started to die off. I think we probably want this level to drop off over time as well. And I think we definitely don't want it to be this bright. There, so let's filter some of that out. Quite vocal down at the bottom end there. Yeah, let's introduce some feedback. A lot of timbral movement happening now, so let's, um, let's maybe have that. Fading over time. Maybe the same with A. Bit of drive. Trying to make it a bit more dangerous sounding. Now that beating that's happening because of the detuned operators is happening at a very steady state. You can hear that extra menace come in there. Perhaps we can go a bit brighter. Oh uh, yes, yeah, so, anyway, sorry, I digress. That beating is happening at a standard rate, and that's because the detune ratio is always the same. So let's also nudge that a little bit. So if we go into our LFOs here, we can go down to... We can do this one of two ways, actually. Okay, let's try this way first. So I'm going to go down to ratio A offset, which is what we were adjusting on page two of uh, SIN 1. Again, we'll set it nice and slow. Ooh, BPM 1 is what I want. Again, uh, the LFO mode that I'm using here is the free running one, which, um, given that I'm going to tweak the speed for all of the different steps, is, is what we want here. So just nudge this. Not by much. That's probably too much, actually. Oh, look.
can hear there that getting quite a lot of movement happening. Let's try the B2 one instead. Okay, so the other place we can do this, I'll try it and see what we like more. It's the pitch of A and B to... That's too wide, but perhaps that was really slow. We get those side bands coming in more strongly than with the ratio offset. I like that, actually. I like that a lot. Is that still too bright? Maybe. Let's just take a little bit off the top here. I think we can, we can work with that. So um, again, let's set our length here. Let's go. Let's go 17. And same deal. We'll lay down a bunch of steps. And uh, I'll just go through and uh, do the same thing. I'll set the notes. I will set the panning. Uh, and we'll tweak the LFO times as well. So I'll do that through the power of editing. I think generally speaking, I'll go for higher notes maybe with this one. Okay, here we go. Okay, then same deal. We've got um, our scale nice and low. We've got long notes. Let's have a look how these two uh, parts now layer over each other. Okay, so I think in retrospect, the depth there is probably too high. And maybe this is slightly too bright still. as well because it's going to inform okay so I think some of the really uh, discordant notes on this second one so when I'm doing a particularly spicy boy probably can have them let's find a spicy boy there's some spicy ones in here. Where are they? Where is my spicy one? Did I really not put like an F sharp in here? Okay, well, he's a bit spicy, so we'll turn him down, have him fade in over a longer time. Abrasive. 
So we're thinking in terms of a arrangement here now. Quite as long. Fading more. We start darker. Spicy boy was on this one. Yeah. Let's give him the same treatment. Again, the composition is kind of mixed up with the sound design intrinsically with drone music. Nice, okay. Right, time to ground this with some low end. So let's think about our bass drone. Okay, so let's give this some weight and um, uh, ground it in a in a key so that things are uh, held together. I'm going to do that, of course, with some bass. And you know, on the digger tone, low bass is real easy to come by. Really low bass. You might need headphones for that one. Okay, so let's um, go to algorithm two again. Let's set carrier. C down to one point five, so an octave even lower. Then mix between the two sides, so we have two sine waves an octave apart. Just wave shape C slightly. Touch moderate modulation. Drive it for some minutes. Let's get some movement in there. Uh, let's try just detuning the B carrier slightly. A little bit of phasing. Here we don't want this long onset, but what I will do when it comes to the performance. So I'll set the release time to infinite. Now if I do that now, I start, I start adding other notes. Obviously, we're going to get a goddamn mess. But in the most recent firmware, what we got with the digger tone is uh, the new voicing modes, which is amazing. So what we can do now is set our play mode to mono instead. So that means that we can do things like this. So we set our amp back to infinite. We now have a voice which is going to ring out forever, but not play over the top of each other. Scrumptious. So 
again, same deal there. Uh, set the amp envelope reset to off and set the phase reset to off. Try to help us get rid of the um, click. A little bit of filter movement each time we play the note. Standard envelope. Try setting C even further down. Too far. Now it comes to the question, do we want to put this through the reverb? And the answer is probably yes so that it spreads itself into space a little bit, but not as much as the other stuff. Chorus. I could do. But what we might want to do is just Pass filter the chorus a little bit. Delay. I don't think so. Probably not quite as much filter movement, I think.
think on this second voice now, the modulation is too strong. See what happened there? Our bass cut out. And that's because its voice was stolen by one of the other tracks. Uh, so what we want to make sure is that we actually have one voice locked to our bass track so that it oh, knob, so that it never gets stolen. simple bass line. It's not moving very much at the moment, is it? So we should um, maybe think about how we can make a little bit more timbral movement here. So I think the first thing we should do, actually the first thing we should do is give it some very low, slow pitch movement so that it starts to beat against some of the other elements. to our something around 0.1, maybe slightly low for the bass. And then let's try just some simple filter movement. Or maybe... Let's just try the feedback. Since we have got feedback on one of the operators. Supportamento. So the neat thing with the Portamento controls on the digger tone is that we don't have to have full Portamento, so we don't have to have it go right the way across from where it started to where it's heading up to. We can do that by lowering the amount. And I quite often set it as low as like 30, so it's only the last bit of the sweep that you hear.
terms of the programming of this, I'm tempted just to say I'll play this live. Uh, otherwise, the program will be much like we've already seen. Uh, the only difference will probably be that I'd have the um, probability of anything that wasn't a C quite a lot lower, perhaps. Let's we'll give it a go. Perhaps we will. So again, we'll set that nice and low. Uh, have we had 11? I don't think we have. Uh, now, we don't have to make the steps very long because of course we've got our um, envelope set to infinite. So we don't need to worry about that. So that's our root note. Okay, so we'll just stick a bunch of these in and again through the magic of editing there will be a baseline in a second okay so what we have is uh, our sequence set up uh, the conditions are well the, the condition of that first C is is off so it'll always play and then for most of the notes, it'll be 25%. And then when we get to a C, I've upped it to 50%. And we might tweak that as it plays. But we'll see how it feels. So give that a go. I think that's changing too often. So uh, we'll lower these, I think. And for the... Uh, likely ones. It'll always ground itself back to that C there. So we don't have anything particularly unpleasant hanging for a long period of time. It took all of that time for us to get one of our other pad notes playing. That's how it can be sometimes with uh, random tricks. Anyway, we've got a track left, so let's do something with it that's a little bit more uh, melodic to just add a little bit more interest here and there. Okay, so with this final track here, I want to create not necessarily a melodic part, but um, a sort of a sequenced, more notey, less droney kind of part to punctuate what's going on with the rest of the uh, drone. So I'm thinking maybe something that's sort of quite bell-like. So let's uh, set about creating something bell-like. So just offset, offset it even further. Give it a bit of a. Okay, on our way. Um Let's go to algorithm uh, six for this.
Let's reduce the level of the modulation, make it softer. So we've detuned everything by hand a little bit. I've chosen some slightly odd ratios anyway. It's a little bit too modulated. Something like this, I think. Let's just try that in context. tune down so it's going to set its octave to minus one. Try a little bit of drive on this to dirty up. You can hear there we got a little click, a little glitch because of the voice stealing. So we do need to maybe address that a little bit. So we may want to, let's just say that we're only going to play one note at a time here. Second page, uh, we can have it go nice and fast. 
podcast and we want it on hold mode and a random and this is going to randomly So in terms of the programming here, mm, so let's uh, set our pattern length. going to play in just some bits to work with. stuff is happening on sort of regular pulses and obviously we're going to lower our trick part probability down real low but let's make sure things aren't happening on a real obvious pulse and the way we can do that is by using our micro, micro timing here and what we might want to do here is micro time things so that they're really close to each other as well so that they happen in little
course we will be. Shutting all of this down with our trick probability in a second. Could, if we were trying to avoid it altogether, we could maybe lock a couple of lock a number of voices to each of these, or we could just pray during a recording that we don't get any voice stealing. That might be easier. Okay, I'm gonna drop the level of the naughty voice a little bit. Take a little bit more of the bottom end out of our first sound. Make more space for the bass. Always need space for the bass. And when you've got such a low sub bass, you can be quite brutal with how much bottom end you pull out. Maybe we can go to the master section and we can just see what it sounds like with the master overdrive on. Again, from a mixing perspective, I think maybe on these tracks here, we could just make sure that stuff doesn't encroach so much on the center. Just make things a little bit wider. Where they're maybe not wide enough. Just to keep it out of the way of the base. to 
apply mastering as far as possible. Don't tend to use overbridge. So little tweaks like filtering, moving sounds away from the center of the stereo spread, especially when you've got so much low end going on, can be really useful. I think that's pretty nice. I think we've been going on for quite long enough. The music you hear now and that you heard at the start of this video comes from a performance of the finished patch. I'll just add a quick note here about how I approach the final performance. Throughout the piece, I'm adjusting the relative trick probabilities of three of the tracks. I'm doing this to try and influence the ebb and flow of the piece in real time, knowing that if I want to increase the density of the main drone or the melodic punctuation, I can bring up their probability or back them off to create space. Similarly, if more tension is needed for contrast, I can bring up the more unstable sound we put on track two. I had to be a little aware of running out of voices, but from putting the track together, I had a fairly good feel for how far I could push the percentages. Ultimately, whether a note plays is still a roll of the dice, but I enjoy this approach of trying to nudge the music where I want it to go. It's something like trying to herd musical cats. Anyway, if you made it this far, thanks for sticking around. If you found the video interesting, then please do the usual subscribe and like malarkey. But seriously, your support for the channel is always super appreciated. As always, thank you for joining me. Take care of yourselves. Until next time, goodbye.